Good morning, good morning. It's our first morning in a marina in, I don't even know, when were we last in a marina? Thailand. Thailand, yeah, in a very long time. So listen, um, the boat, the boat is clean inside. We have spent uh, okay, a couple of things. We've had no wind, there is no wind. And we have in Marmaris had to get north to Ishmir and the wind normally comes from the north and we were lucky to find ourselves with like five days of zero wind. So we just motored north. That essentially means, well, we got zero sailing done, but we had flat calm for five days, which meant that during those flat calm days, we just cleaned. The boat is spotless on the inside. Last night we pulled up in Fokka Marina, which is an absolutely stunning place. The marina is beautiful. It's literally a month old and the town is probably three, 400 years old from the buildings. It's probably been there since like ancient times, but nonetheless. But what we managed to do yesterday was get a good look at the boat for the first time and the hull is stuffed. Seven Star, when they uh, shipped the boat, they must have done some work on the boat and it is covered in rust. I thought at first it was just sand and I have, I've got enough oxalic acid here to kind of get the rust stains off the decks so if we've got a usable deck, but the hulls are orange. They, it really does look like sea wind built a boat for like a Mad Max movie. So today, a couple of things. We have the service agent, uh, Mitha and uh, Kivanch, who is Sea uh, Wind Europe's rep here. And they've got the Sea Wind Europe office just opened up here. And we have about 10 minor little warranty things to do. One of our BNG instruments has got some water ingress that needs to be addressed. There are some parts that we need fitting that they need to sort out. They are really minor, minor things, but importantly, we need to get this boat cleaned. Very quick explanation if you don't know what we're talking about. We had our boat shipped from Thailand to Turkey with a company called Seven Star. When we took delivery of our boat in Marmaris in Turkey, we thought that the boat was just really, really dirty, but it turned out that it was actually rust stains from someone probably using an angle grinder near our boat on the deck of the cargo ship. So we've been trying to clean the boat, get rid of the rust stains to no avail, I might add. And that's one of the jobs that we need to get sorted while we're here in Foggia in Turkey. Okay, let's continue. I don't have the time or the inclination. No, I've got the inclination. I just don't have the time to get this done, like two big holes. And it's not just the outside of the hull because they were grinding on deck, all the inside of the bridge deck is like orange. And this stuff needs professionally treating. So um, I've, put a, I've put a complaint into Seven Star and said, look, you know, I understand the boat needs cleaning, but this isn't. And they have been very responsive thus far. They have come around and said, look, okay, we, yeah, we'll get on to you about, we'll get on to you about this. How this is resolved, I always think that, you know, problems can occur, it's how you deal with the problems that actually makes the brand. Anyway, that's that. So we have a meeting in probably about 15 minutes to discuss a time frame for getting the work done to address our warranty issues, to fix the parts that we've got. Uh, Spectra finally sent us a, um, another water pump. Our water maker boost pump failed and it came down to essentially a broken component in the boost pump. Now, I know from receiving a new boost pump that actually the part that failed was assembled by Spectra. It wasn't a sea wind thing because it's it's the elbow joint that was been, had been bodged back together. So they've sent us a new boost pump, but Phil Harper replaced the broken part with a metal, a metal bit and between he and I, we've We've got the silicon gasket, which will not degrade. We've got metal parts to actually form that joint and it works bloody perfectly. So you basically rebuilt the part, but better than Spectra yeah. would have done. We rebuilt, or Phil Harper rebuilt yeah. it. So I don't need to see when to do that. I don't need that replaced. It's really just small little parts. And I think there are a couple of random things. We had some smart glass put into our boat um, for the windows, which was a great idea. Thank you, James. It just didn't work. It failed. It just, it, for some whatever reason, it didn't work. And so we are replacing the smart glass with just normal blinds. The problem with the blinds is that we have, they have been chasing us around the world, you know, so we're still waiting for, for blinds to arrive. Only two little ones for the, for the heads. But honestly, in addition to that, we've just, we've just got to get some work done. So we'll wait for that meeting. We'll start the meeting and then um, we'll just go to the spreadsheet, get the last things finished. And then hopefully we'll be here in, you know, with enough time to get this boat fixed. And that is my laundry. <laughs> I'm Teresa, this is Nick, and this is Ruby Rose 2, our floating home. Join us as we settle into life on board our brand new catamaran, documenting our adventures and never shying away from the reality of boat life. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment because we'd love to hear from you and a big thanks to our community of patrons. Good afternoon, it has been a long, long day and we're not anywhere near but done. 
I'm gonna just say we've been in Turkey. We've been in this building for three, three nights. This is our third night. I've, I've just never seen a harder working bunch of people. They just work their ass. They just work. Firstly, Seven Star have been very gracious about the damage to the boat, and they have said, "Look, do whatever it takes to to do." They these guys have been seeing four people working on this boat for three days, and they just said to us just now, "Look, we can't get it all clean. We have to try and lift the boat and get it cleaned." Now the problem is that it's Friday evening, and uh, on Monday there's a three-day holiday that starts, and so they need to get this boat lifted and put back in the water. So lifted and put back in in one day. So they're gonna try and lift it tomorrow morning and then put it back tomorrow morning. They're also working on the warranty work and actually there's no way they're gonna get finished by Sunday, no, no way. There's just too much to do. Honestly, the other thing which is incredible is opposite the boat, there is a bar and there wasn't a bar there two days ago. In the last two days, they have built a deck. There, there's a team of about like I don't know, like 50 people just working on this bar, which I'm assuming opens tonight. They literally put the, the fence posts and the barriers and God knows what else up about an hour ago. At some point over the next hour, we have a rigger coming. I want the, I need a lose gauge on the shrouds. The, I just need someone to look at these shrouds and make sure that the, especially the cap shroud tension is right. It seems far too slack. So I just need someone to actually do the tension checks on this. Okay. Yes, a little bit too old tension. Over, okay. How do you know what it should be? Is this a new boat? Is it just a standard? We get a recommendation by factory, factory's rig. Yeah, the fa I've already ah, got the okay. settings from the factory from Lucas, and it says there uh, they should be uh, ideally set it to 25% of braking strain. Okay. According to PT3 model which is the PT3 model. Okay, perfect. To have 25% of the yeah. braking load, the reading should be 50. Okay. And yours is reading 52. Okay, so at least we lose even it. slightly... Uh, yeah, we did. you don't need to lose okay. in that. The main idea with the, with the rigging of such a mass is the mast pen. Mast yeah. pen shows you everything. I, I read it, it's okay. And what about the shrouds? You're happy with shrouds it? Shrouds will be uh, loose. Yeah. I checked that. Yeah. That's different. Uh, most important thing is this. Okay, that's more important it's than the shirt. It's mass pen, so it's related with sales, so, okay. so it's important. Okay. So it depends of your usage. For example, if you use in big ways or breaking ways, maybe you may like to have uh, mass some little uh, flexible. The lured uh, shrouds, like in 20 knots of wind or 18 knots with the lured shrouds, there must be like a, like they just do this. They're completely slack. Is it, it, it is shaking you. It does shake, yeah, the rig shakes, yeah. Okay. This weather is very unusual apparently. It's like very, very blustery. It's still very warm. But we had some rain this morning and it has been super windy all day. <laughs> Tension here corresponds to approximately 14% of uh, the braking load, yep. which is for catamarans normally quite okay. okay but perfect. he says, uh, of course, it's uncomfortable uh, to have a flip flop, so we may tighten a little bit just but to feel a uh, bit, yeah. bit better. Okay. Right? I, 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 if it, as long as it's safe, I don't mind if it's swinging. If it's safe, leave it alone. Is that recording? All right, well, I had a chat with the rigger. Uh, the cap shrouds need a little bit of attention, but apparently, and this is because we actually had some people on YouTube saying those shrouds are far too loose. And it's actually worth having a look because obviously you need the shrouds to keep the bloody mast up. But what they did say, just as a knowledge, because I was unaware of this, it's actually the shrouds, the diamond shrouds that got the side of the mast um, that are important to uh, give bend to the mast. And unfortunately, he said the wind is just too high. It is blowing 15 stroke 20, at the moment and you can't judge the bend uh when the winds are high but he just said look the the cap shroud turnbuckles need a little turn so they're going to give them a little turn just to put a little bit more tension on them but it's good to know that you know everything is safe so for all those of you who express some concern as to the slack nature of our lured shrouds under wind we have the uh the guy from uman sales has come down with a very very expensive set of kit 
always worth checking out. Thank you for your advice. We do actually listen to the advice on the internet. Sometimes. Tomorrow is going to be a very, very, very frenetic day. And so, yeah, we'll be back later. Um, I'm a sweaty heap. But it's all so we can get Ruby Rose 2 back on the water very, very quickly. So, honestly, I heartfelt thanks to everyone at Sea Wind Europe. I understand this is your job, but you're doing your job with passion. I'll probably be here for another hour. I want to talk to the rigger. And then maybe we'll get a beer, maybe about seven, eight o'clock. Anyway, talk to you all later. Ruby Roses, apologies for my hair. Super early in uh, Focha Marina. The guys are trying everything they can to get this boat ready inside of the three days that we have allocated them. We're getting there, we're getting there. We are getting there. Okay, so for those of you keeping track, today is Saturday and we had planned to haul out today and clean the boat and get rid of all the rust stains. But on reflection, see when Europe said that there was no way they could do it all in one day and we didn't want to be left in the yard for the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday that would be the public holidays where no one would be working. So we decided to stay in the marina. There was plenty of work to continue doing. The team were happy to continue working over the weekend, which was just amazing and that would mean that we would be able to stay in the water in the marina for the public holidays and then we would haul out the following week and that will be happening next episode so if you want to watch that episode make sure you subscribe our patrons will be getting it a week early but as I'm re-watching the spear roll I am remembering just how hectic it was getting our boat into this dock for haul out we didn't even have room for our fenders very very nervous moments as you can see by the hectic camera work anyway subscribe for that episode that will be happening next week patrons will be getting it within the next day or two and anyway let's get on with this episode where we are continuing to work on Ruby Rose 2 to get her all ready to go sailing again Nick can you explain what's happening? Yeah, in fact, there's lots to do. Look at the mast. We've got a power well, We've got the, uh, the aerial. Um, the TV aerial has been bent and it just needs to be put back. But also, there's uh, we have lost part of our Windex, I think. Oh. So, uh, um, when it was being shipped. You're not sure. It used to be there. Oh. This is not what we're holding the line. <laughs> Once you're the one standing there holding the bit of rope, waiting for someone to tell you what to do. I think he's found a problem with the, uh, the turning block on the top of our screecher, you know, the one that's always twisted. Ah, okay. So I think he's uh, going to take a lot, he's taken a lot of photographs. Oh, oh, good. I'm glad there's something that he's actually found there. Okay, so it's Saturday morning. We still have two more days to get all this work done before these boys go off on their holidays. I'm just going to introduce you to the most Jack Sparrow looking boat worker <laughs> I've ever met, who you may have seen in the Vietnam factory. Charlie Ann, welcome. Welcome and thank you for making us feel so at home in Turkey. Hello, I'm Charlie Ann. Uh, I'm production uh, supervisor in Sea Wind, Turkey. He has been working all morning, so he's been he's the production supervisor for 1170, but not only that, he is this morning fixed our davits. He has fixed our, our instruments. He's fixing everything and now he's going to get the life raft out because we do need to change some checks that you and I can't do because the life raft is too heavy. You already know Kivanch because yeah. we've been, yeah, he's been looking after us. So Charlie Ann, thank you so much. I really appreciate yeah, that. Welcome. And uh, yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you so okay. much. Okay, so why does the life raft need to be taken out? Only because we had a sea wind. If they ever want us to look at certain aspects, they issue essentially bulletins and they're like, can you please look at the, the there's one um, bottle, a sock bottle screw, it's a, an, eye, an eye screw. They just want to make sure that the bolt is fully engaged. They had a problem with one of the other holes and they're like, can you check it? The problem is that the life raft is an eight man life raft. It is too heavy for us to lift and we haven't been in a marina. So we would have to lift it down into the dinghy and then lift it back up. So this is an opportunity while we are in a marina with two very strong Turkish men <laughs> to uh, get this put down and put back up without killing ourselves. So we're so just doing a check. It's just a, a quick check. Yeah. Should take two minutes. Okay. All right, so the guys are still working on the boat, so we thought we'd just give them a little bit of space and we came to this Sea Wind office. Thanks for having a little sit down. 
because uh, yeah, Seawind have taken possession of this office space and it's like a really lovely space just to sit and get any work done or just to get off the boat or whatever and it's available to all Seawind customers who are here and they've kind of decked it out with some nice couches and a little kitchenette and a dining table so yeah it's lovely three days in we have had i think we've only got half the work done maybe yeah about half the work done. everything closes for eid so we are taking a break the boat uh is going to be lifted on thursday morning to get uh cut polishing done and yeah so that's being covered by seven star what have we got left to do there's uh i mean so we've got the items still outstanding yeah uh now we have this uh, stainless steel uh protection for, for the, the anchor, anchor. Yep. that that piece uh, has already been made and Mitat is uh, due to uh, pick that yep. uh, but uh, the good thing about having the boat uh, up on the hard is uh, they will be able to make some additional gel coat repair also uh, the for anchor. the cracks that the hair caused good the main sheet needs to be re-spliced that's Mitat's yeah. doing that and the popper is uh, have already been done, done uh, yep. the tap has been uh, already changed yep. uh, for the steering wheel damage we have done what we could no, do no that's and fine i've got yeah. to raise the query for yeah. the seawind on that yep uh, there's a there's a um it's like a, a block that goes on the boom end that's got to be drilled through mm -hmm. and it just guides the reefing lines through uh, okay. that whole six says that the sharp corners chafe the reefing lines even more so it's mm -hmm. just been modified yeah. screws for the davits have already been uh tightened yes and they have, yeah they have Perfect. applied loctite and then uh, due to that getting loose there was some uh, crack in the sika in the joining yep. point so good. that sika has been repaired good uh, bng triton had so, water in it yep. and we have already replaced that rigging check have already been done yep. uh, we were discussing about this ball spirit uv coating yeah uh, you're waiting for some confirmation from the yeah. manufacturer yeah exactly. okay yeah. well i mean yeah we, we'll put the bow spirit back on and we may have to just get that re mm -hmm recoated it in at the end of the season exactly. i don't think we've got time to do that yeah, now because yeah. it's all going to be stripped off and done again yeah, yeah. okay fine Been almost there and the uh, majority of the items and good thing we will have some more time on, uh, on thursday. thursday perfect looks like we're going to no no between you, you guys have done so much yeah no no honestly it's worked crazy hard crazy hard. Yeah. and the boat even now even with that polishing just looks amazing like mm -hmm. compared to how it was before they started mm -hmm. like it looks really good all right well let's get back to the boat see what the guy's doing and then we can move on from there all right guys that's it for this week's episode join us next week where we hold out Ruby Rose 2 for the first time as I've already mentioned I mean spoiler alert we do manage it but as you can see in this clip here that wet dock is so tiny and there is Nick very very happy that he's not the one on the helm our patrons as I said do get this episode a week early they also get to see it ad free so if that's important to you then please consider signing up to our patreon page the link is always in the description down below otherwise if patreon is not for you that's absolutely no problem please consider subscribing to our channel if you enjoy our episodes and you watch regularly that does help us out a lot and if you liked this video then give us a thumbs up and please leave us a comment down below if you have anything to say to us <laughs> all right guys we'll see you next week thanks again for watching